Before we write our function, I'm going to kill our graph that we made previously. Um, if you want to close things very fast and you don't want Igor to say, do you want to save this before you kill it? Hold the Alt key and click the X and you won't be prompted to save your figure or table or, or whatever you're trying to kill. Okay, let's write a function. So to write a function, um, to code, to program, to write a script, a macro, any of the above, uh, to automate things, you will first open the procedure window. This is under Windows Procedure Window, or Control M for the hotkey users. Whatever you have at the top of your uh, procedure file is fine. Definitely keep it there. It might be a little different than mine. Um, that's a future tutorials discussion is what those mean and what they're doing. But just don't touch them for now. Um, to begin a function, you will write function and the name of the function immediately following. So let's name this function. Let's do a really simple function first. Let's do a uh, do hello world. Close parentheses. So this is our function, do hello world. That is what we will write when we want to call it. So now everything in between these two lines is a set of instructions um, that will be called when we call do hello world. So let's simply have the command prompt print hello world. No need for semicolons. If you're coming from languages with semicolons, simply put everything on a new line. So you notice that I hit compile and I did not get an error message. That's a good thing. More often than not, however, when you hit compile, you will get a compilation error or a comp compile time error. This basically just means that Igor noticed something in your syntax or the formatting of what you wrote doesn't make any sense and it'll, it'll do its best to point, uh, point you to where the trouble is. So let's fix our problem. Note that I've tabbed each line within the function uh, and this helps with readability. So the more complex your functions get, the more you should pay attention to tabbing and uh, keeping things nice and easy to read. Let's test our function. To call our function, we'll simply write out the name of the function, not forgetting our parentheses. And it looks like it worked, so that's good. Let's make a slightly more complicated function. So in this function, I would like to be able to pass a wave or pass multiple waves to the function and have the function operate on those waves. So let's say this function will accept a two waves, uh, x wave and a y wave. Now immediately after we declare the start of our function and, sit and uh, indicate that we will be passing some parameters into the function, we must tell uh, the function what those parameters ought to be. So we are expecting two waves, so we'll write wave and the name of our parameters, like so. And this is telling Igor are telling our uh, compiler that this function accepts two waves, wx axis and wy axis. And those are just names of uh, names that we'll use in our function to operate on the, the parameters. So let's say we want to make a figure like we made before, but do it automatically. Uh, we can use the code that we generated previously, modify it a bit, and do the same stuff. So first we'll display 
our speed versus distance, but we want to make this a modular and reusable piece of code. So we'll use the parameters that we passed our function. And so that will have a, that will display a figure of the y-axis wave versus the x-axis wave. We can basically just copy in the entire modified graph command that we used to make it purple and dotted and whatnot. Uh, this doesn't include any references to a wave, so it's just going to operate on the the way, the, uh, the figure that's most uh, that's on top, and the figure that will be on top is the one that we displayed in the line above. And we'll do the same thing for our labeling. I don't think it matters if you do delay update or not, but let's just keep it in there. And we want to make our graph have those characteristics. So this should produce a figure uh, identical to the one that we made before, but a lot quicker. So that's the code in its entirety. Uh, let's go ahead and call it. Our x-axis is distance. And look at that. We have written a function that makes a weirdly scrunched up graph. And it's awesome. So that's the basics of how to make a, uh, a simple function in Igor. There's a lot you can do with functions. Uh, basically, more complex functions are going to be built off simpler functions. Um, so you should try to make your functions as simple and modular as possible, and it will help you down the line. All right.